Welcome to the Where the Fuck is Ian podcast. <laughs> Ian get coffee and where the fuck did he go? <laughs> Here he comes. Oh shit. Slowly walking in with his long flowing locky hair. <laughs> Looking like a Scotsman today. I don't know, bro. Usually it's Viking vibes, but today I feel like you could be rocking a kilt. Black people's shitty hair. Throwing some boulders. <laughs> throwing some boulders, bro. We're live, of course. We're of course we're oh, live. Yeah. We're always live. Yeah, here, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Destroyed it. Destroyed my iPhone today. But even better. I'm going to tell a little story of a man named Barrett. <laughs> now, when I tell this story, it's all love. But before we get there, hit it. <laughs> Welcome to the Sofa Kingdom podcast, where none of our friends are safe from being trashed. I am one of your hosts, Nelson. Ed, we're all here in the building today. We're going to respectfully allow Matt to finish wailing on that guitar. Take it home, baby. Yeah. Yeah, just like that. And drinks from Halen, none of them. Ow! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, all, they all stand in the <laughs> skills of Matt Hilton. So when I tell this story, <clears throat> I want you to know I'm not looking to offend anyone, but it's fucking fantastic and hilarious. A friend of ours looking at someone from across the room like, oh, there's a good-looking woman. And maybe it is Maybe that. it was. Maybe yeah, it was. Maybe it was. Fairness. But the shirt read... But... Maybe not. <laughs> Transvestite. <laughs> now, it may not even say that, no. but there was hair blocking things, and all I saw was trans. Could have said transformers. Might have. <laughs> Might have. It could have. Very likely. It could have said transformative. We were just looking out for Barrett. <laughs> could have said transform your mind and body. But no, because it was Baird. Staring across the room. I was like, bro, you looking at this uh, transvestite? <laughs> Which I guess is completely fine if it that's is. the thing. You know? No, it hey. is. It is. It's hilarious because... We're not here to yuck anybody's yum. No, no, no. And that's why I said we're not looking to offend anybody. But in this situation, our friend, who will not be named Barrett, <laughs> was not looking for that as an he, opportunity he might for have himself. Wanted, he might have wanted some And if it is your opportunity, if it is Lady your bag, Max. it is your thing... Have at it. Nobody's hating. Just oh. a fucking funny story to have. <laughs> yeah. Then, your boy, Nelson, crushes <laughs> his fucking iPhone. Uh, um, you know, I went to the drive-thru, and this is my punishment for that. I was like, let me get a quick bite to eat, come home, clean, get the podcast ready. <laughs> and my gym bag was in the trunk of the car, so I had to get out, get my gym bag, bring it to there to the front seat to get my wallet to pay for the food. I drive home, can't find my phone. I'm like, fuck. I'm like, all right, let me eat and shower real quick. Boom, looking for the phone as I'm trying to eat, do all these things, check my gym bag, check my car, got a flashlight, trunk of the car, check my, my bag for my food. I'm like, where the fuck is it? I'm like, all right, fuck. <laughs> it had to be when I got out of the car that the phone was sitting on my lap, perhaps, fell out at the drive-thru, very reasonable. Logical conclusion. That's a likely story. Uh, yes. <laughs> it's a likely story for anyone but me. <laughs> get out. Go to get in my car. Put it in reverse. And I hear, crack, 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 Should have got an Android. Yeah. <laughs> if I would have got an inch. Joy. Your Android would actually crawl The phone would have not worked from its conception. No. So Android, it, would actually, Android would actually anticipate the car coming Right, and crawl. move out of the way. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like a thing from the Adam's family. Just kind of like. It would have transformed. <laughs> yeah. Escape. But no. That's how Apple it. gets how Apple gets you. Yeah. Yeah. Good thing I got the insurance. I mean, nowadays you kind of have to because. There's no like third party fixing for the most part um, that's reasonable anyway. Uh, everybody's very expensive when it comes to fixing these. Also, Apple strategically kills people that work on their phones. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah. They wait outside in front they of your house. Out, they find out, oh, <laughs> yeah. You work on Apple phones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they wear like Android shirts. They're like, hey, we work with Android. Hey, come over here, buddy. Come meet us in the back alley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, they try to throw you off the scent, those bastards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're here post Hurricane Ian. Mm. Mm. Yeah. We survived. Yep. Yep. Big and wet and not a good time. Area 
area we were at, we got pretty lucky. It yeah. didn't come on shore as early as anticipated. Mm -hmm. It kept a little more of a northerly track, so we just got kind of outer bands. We got some tornadoes, though. Yeah. yeah. yeah, some tornadoes. yeah the outer Such bands down. did have some nasty tornadoes and whatnot, but uh, we were pretty good. A little bit of rain, a little bit of flooding, yeah. but nothing too crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually bought two inner tubes. I was planning on going in the water <laughs> it flooded the front of my house and like ha 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 and chilling in it make a little video for the tube i and thought yeah i was gonna fly a kite on my wiener <laughs> in my neighborhood there's some pretty nice people yeah and, my, and a mighty small kite that is they, yeah so uh very <laughs> then i i went and i just so happened to see like boil water and the, you know the feces is mixing with the trash and mixing yeah. with the water and it's disgusting so don't do that you will die. So I, I laugh. I'm like, ah, fuck. I spent 10 bucks. I guess I lost that 10 bucks. This is Florida. Then yeah. I go online. And what do I see? Ah, Jits chicks <laughs> with a boogie board pulling themselves through muck infested water. <laughs> Margo is immune. Margo so, is immune. So, I mean, one, kudos on having roughly the same idea. Like there's Florida Two. man and then there's Florida woman. <laughs> and that's and that's Margo. Margo is unstoppable. Thank you for being Florida woman. Yeah. yeah. Drop Margo off in the Everglades, she's coming back with alligator armor. God damn right. And <laughs> yeah, probably she, she like is. like Hercules but with like a yeti like thrown over her head like <laughs> as a cow like damn, you know they're endangered, right? Oh shit. <laughs> so, since you know, we're a podcast and we're into all things like Disney, pop culture, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, since it's and it's now October 1st, mm -hmm. yep. uh, and Nelson's getting a head start on the Halloween candy. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm sad. Egg. I crushed my phone. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is comfort food. <laughs> so since, since yesterday was the beginning of October, um, mm -hmm. Hocus Pocus 2 came out. Yes, it did. And uh, Highly anticipated. Yes. And yeah. some, two, some. two of us here have seen it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And? And? What, what, what are your thoughts? Friend of the show, Dana, had a little gathering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Dana. Had some food. Great spread. Had some drinks. Good environment. Get to it, bro. What are you not saying <laughs> about Hocus Pocus 2? Great company. Great yeah. company, Ian. Yeah. Fantastic <laughs> company. That guy there, Tyler, he's a great hugger. Uh -huh. Great, great beautiful, hugger. beautiful home. <laughs> very very hugger. well put together. Uh -huh. Peter Parker. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful yeah. set of clay. Listen, motherfuckers. <laughs> Listen here. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Give me the review for Hocus Pocus 2. They, uh, it wasn't a terrible movie. No. Mm. They tried to humanize a, the yeah. characters a little too much, mm -hmm. make them a little nicer. Mm -hmm. They were supposed to be mean characters. They laugh about cannibalism in the first movie yeah. and eating children as a joke. They are, witches, they are witches from hell. Yes. Right. Let's, that, let's, not, let's not, you know, the book they used with an eyeball on it is made of the flesh of human beings. So yes. wait, is hell becoming woke too? <laughs> <laughs> It Maybe. was hell's like we got to change our image here. <laughs> People might think we're yeah. mean. <laughs> it, it was definitely more uh, family friendly. Okay. They leaned a little more into more of the comedy. It was not nearly as as spooky, we'll say, as no. the original. Mm -hmm. And they, they had a, a little bit of a, a too much humanizing of the main villains. They should have just had them yeah. be villains. Mm -hmm. And do, do we want to just give full spoilers? Turn your camera off. Yeah. All right. Let, I mean, let's be real. You they know, they essentially ha create another coven. They should have had just had it one good coven versus one bad coven, okay. and let the new coven win. Right. That would have been perfectly fine. They kind of humanize the characters, and she kind of willingly kind of lets them win at the end because of her missing her sisters and not realizing she fucks up when she does a spell. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I mean, for a Disney movie, it's good. Yeah. But mm -hmm. in terms of what they could have done if they just leaned they tried. if they just leaned a little more into like just let the villains be villains yeah we don't need uh, to humanize them and give them any type of redemption just let the bad guy be a bad guy let the good guys be good guys mm -hmm. and let them prevail over the bad guys the scariest thing about the movie was sarah jessica parker by far oh I, I, I heard too. she didn't even use any makeup <laughs> no she didn't Oh, it's all and natural. Her mouth, her mouth is so goddamn big. Mm. Like when she laughed, like, ah! It was like, oh my God. What the shit? Like Jack Skellington from <laughs> Nightmare Before Christmas. So would you recommend it to anyone to watch? If you are a die-hard Hocus Pocus fan, and that's like, sure. It's more yeah. for that. You, but to someone who just appreciated the first film and recognizes it as a classic, do, is this a must? Fuck no. No, okay. skip it. It's, Ed, not, it's not nearly If you're scrolling film. through... All your standard Halloween movies. I'm doing that with 
my daughter now. We're going mm-hmm. through one at a time of Halloween all the different dream. ones. Halloween dream. Don't forget the Halloween yeah. dream. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. We did Halloween Town yesterday. Okay, all right. Mm-hmm. She laughed at the quality. I had to explain to her this was a straight to TV movie. Mm-hmm. Even though it's a movie, it was a straight to TV movie. Yeah, it's right. And these kids these days, they watch YouTube and they're like, we can see better yeah. shit made from like, home. YouTube's in 4K. Yeah. And this this thing was like a 480p oh, like yeah. mm. old school standard. So okay. uh, and it's kind of like come on Disney, step up your quality. You gotta right. have yeah. better versions of this floating around. Yeah, yeah. But it's a, you gotta remaster that shit. Come if on. you're a fan of the Hocus Pocus movie and you're going through all the Halloween stuff, it's not a bad movie to include okay. on the list. It's just honestly, I think the first one is probably a little bit better. Moral of the story is yeah, good company, some food. You'll enjoy the movie and keep it moving. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so have you guys watched Andor episode four yet? I did. I did. did nope. You? Yeah, I, I quit at three. I, <laughs> <laughs> I will watch it. I'm just going to wait for them all to come out so that I can punish myself in one sitting. It looks like there might be a ray of hope. Mm. There's actually a plot now. Oh, was that a was that a throw at Ray? Is Ray in the show? No, definitely not. No, oh, no, that, right. that, that, that timeline's done. <laughs> Time yeah, no, the fourth one is when he actually meets the rest of the crew. Okay, yeah, no. So I did see the fourth one. Mm-hmm. It does look like they're actually getting into the thing you want the show to be. Yes. Okay. How successfully they portray that will really deem how good the show actually ends up being. It's like Star Wars does a crime caper movie, kind of. Like it's yes. gonna be like not a bank robbery. Ocean's but Eleven sort of, meets. Yeah, it's like Star a Grand Theft Auto mission. It's like a Grand okay. Theft Auto yeah. mission. Okay. But it looks like there's actually going to be a plot. Like, he has a part to play now. I understand why yep. the guy who you find out who he is, I understand why he picked him now, mm-hmm. why he's going to be useful. So we'll see. Okay. Do you suspect the man with the trench coat of being a Jedi? It's possible. Because in the beginning, he did have what looked like a Jedi handle with a telescoping pole coming mm-hmm. out of it that he he he, he turns it to just the handle and puts it away. Yeah. And he does give the man a blue kyber crystal. Now, does he say, I am one with the Force? The he forces? doesn't. He never said that. One with but it, at, it, at this point, they would kind of be underground, I, I think. if we're, we're He's a Jedi. He's doing a really good job of hiding, especially since he's hiding on Coruscant. But a lot of them yeah. did subterfuge like that. Right. I guess if, you, if you're really close to danger, well, I'm trying to think where that quote came from. It was like, the closer we are to danger, the further we are from harm. I think it's from yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like, like the criminals that you hear that like are living That's across from, the street from the police station. It, it's yes. like Mary. Mar- Mar- <laughs> Mary or Pippin says it to Treebeard in, uh, in The Two Towers. He uh, says, okay. he yeah, says yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah. let's go back towards Isengard. Why? Well, the closer we are to danger, the further we are from harm. And, <laughs> and you're like, oh, that makes sense. Until yeah. you get closer Tree- to danger, yeah. and Tree- then you're like, <laughs> we are absolutely in harm's yeah. way. Well, Treebeard follows it up with something that doesn't make any sense. He says, oh, he says, that doesn't make any sense. He says, but then again, you are really small. <laughs> like, well, that doesn't make I any get- sense either. I, okay, well, I guess if, you, if you're going to tear that apart, it's because they're easy to hide. Maybe, but they're standing on top of a giant tree, man. Like, no. <laughs> uh, it, it's just bullshit. I take it back. It's You're bullshit correct. Muddled. Muddled bullshit. <laughs> Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, though. That last episode, that okay. Sh- that show is fucking okay. killing it, right? All right. I mean, okay. and I feel like the that show is just getting progressively better and better. And that it is still following the original formula. Like, think about the original Lord of the Rings. I think we said it before. There was a slow opening. Yeah. They really wanted you to kind of feel like, oh, this is how life is. Everybody's happy, and it's calm. And then all of a sudden, the shit storm starts a spinning, and we're in the middle of Hurricane Ian. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, I, I like the direction that the show is taking. Um, you have to pay attention to what the orcs are chanting, too, because what the orcs are ooh. chanting a lot of the times, they it – it, it gives away like what the intentions are. Like for instance, the orcs were chanting Adar, it means leader. Yeah. Mm. Um, then they were chanting something else that started with an N, and I had to actually look it up, and it was it translates to death in black speech, and that's okay. their official mm. battle chant. Nice. Okay. And then this last episode, have you seen it? No, but go ahead, go, okay. go ahead sure. anyway. Yeah, yeah, no, go, right. go right ahead. Spoiler alert. Okay. Um, when what happens at the end with the water that creates uh, eventually it ends up leading to an eruption. Yeah. They are chanting Udun, which is a re- reference to the fires of Mount Doom. Ooh. It is the lava that flows from Mount Doom. So when that th- mountain erupted, right. I think we witnessed the birthing of Mount Doom. Oh. And I think that the land that they are on is going to be Mordor. I Fuck think that yeah. when that happened, when that 
water poured and they yeah. created that eruption. They literally birthed the land. They, they got they got, they got a place to call home now. Yes. Isn't that quaint? That's what they want. That's all they want. The orcs <laughs> want a, pla- a place that they can, and the guy. I love how the guy. You think they're gonna hang an "Eat, Love, Pray" plaque Maybe. in the middle of Mordor? <laughs> they could. They could. <laughs> Bro, if there was some equivalent, they are of, inclusive of though. that in orc language. Look like, how diverse the like orcs eat, are. Love, I mean, pray. Yeah. I would. F- I would. There's no racism die. in Mordor. Well, no. I don't, I don't no. Know, I mean maybe. that's because they murder each other. Yeah. So. True. It's they're, they're equal actually, opportunity, death, and destruction. I, I usually have the closed captions on, and there's a bunch of stuff that they they say that you don't hear at all. Right. Mm. Like even like in, in especially in like the little quiet moments where the person is actually just muttering something to themselves. You pick up background noise. Yeah. And yeah. and it and it's all night, and you're like, oh, I, I didn't even watch. hear Sometimes. that at always. all on coming off. You know, a surround sound. It didn't even play the audio loud enough to even notice something was being said. But the closed caption actually picks it up and puts it up there. But it does also sometimes spoil things from yeah, you know a, yeah, a second or two ahead of time. Yeah, my my ex's dad. I remember the one time he roasted you know Mike. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. roasted Mike alive. I remember the one time we were in the condo <laughs> and we were watching Peaky Blinders. And Peaky Blinders, they speak English. Sure, but roughly, it's it's <laughs> roughly, <borderline. laughs> roughly, roughly. It's like yeah, Pikey, yeah. like Irish English. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's rough sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes a guy's speaking a full sentence. You're like, what the. Fuck you like, you know, I got so, it and in the. It's borderline. Yeah, it's, it's borderline Scottish. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. hard to fucking understand. So anyway, we're watching it with subtitles on, and I was in the kitchen or something, and like Rick came in, you know, my ex's dad, and he looks over and he sees Mike watching Peaky Blinders, and there's subtitles on. Right. He goes, you have subtitles on. Mike goes, Yeah. He's like, you know, he's like, you know, he's like, Rick goes, Well, they're they're speaking English, and he goes, Yeah. He says, But it like helps me understand things. And Rick goes, oh, and then he pauses for a little bit. I'd never heard him say something like this. And he pauses for a little bit. He goes, you watch porn with something else, too? <laughs> <laughs> and I, just, I remember I was, like, I was, like, washing a dish or something. I was, like, God damn. I was, like, and Mike just sat there, like, ah, ah, ah. Uh, I, was like, uh, I was, like, God damn it. You roasted him alive. Yeah, like, like it, was like a, yes. it was, like, a scorpion fatality. Like, he's <laughs> has burned him alive. I was, like, holy shit. Like, there's a torch skeleton sitting on my couch. I was, like, all right. So right. he deserved it. Yeah. Well, that's what he gets from almost burning my fucking house down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never, ever let Mike on the grill. No. Oh, no. I wouldn't let him cook Pop Tarts in my house. <laughs> a fear that well, one, he would you'd burn have to let something one, down. You'd have to let him in your house. This is and true. This is true. <laughs> yeah. He would have to pass the, the you, test. You should watch Dahmer on Netflix before you, <laughs> let, before you let Mike in your house. Yo, I'm hearing it's very fucking creepy. And I had no idea who the main actor was until I went in and I looked. Hey, he's just Silver? Peter Quick Evans Silver. is his name. I've seen Silver. someone point out that he's he's just collecting serial killer roles. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what kind of darkness he had to subject himself to get into this role, but he... Well, the three so previous siller, yeah, serial killer six. roles. Yeah, I'm on episode six, and what are you he's, thinking? he's very disturbing to watch. It mm. is uncomfortable. Really? Like, it's a, it's, I will say it's good. It's good because you need to know what the hell you're getting into. Right. I see. Like, you're about to watch a, it's not murderous. a documentary. It's a real, like, it's like a, it's the best they could portray. Yeah. It's right. a portrayal of the life of, and the experiences of one of the most prolific and fucked up serial killers in American history. Mm. Mm. So do not go into it wanting a positive out no, right. you you will you will feel different after each episode. Damn, and they're long. They're like sixty plus minutes. I mean, they're long episodes. Oof. Right. Damn, and it's uncomfortable. Some of the shit you're watching, and it's like it's silence. Le- let and me ask you're you. Just there like, let, let me ask you guys a question then. What do you think of like sometimes you feel like there's a bit of a glorification to mm. those kinds of people, right? Now it's one thing when it's a fictional character, right? All for it. Have at it, fantasy. You're writing something. Even that's kind of scary when they get behind like Jason or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. yeah. Uh, but for an actual person who did this to other actual people who have in 1991, the families are still alive. Families, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, that are still alive and around. Like I don't, I don't like the victims. I don't know, families could actually watch the Dahmer. I don't know that Netflix it needs right to be made. It's not like it's Genghis Khan, right? Where like we're a little removed. Yeah. Um, from that. Time the year and 1200 age. in Mongolia. Yeah. 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 Now, you're the only one that's seen it. Like, do you feel like they're kind of like glorifying it in a way, or are they trying to the tell sh- it as I, a documentary? I know the vibe? show. I know the show is getting a lot of attention and everything, and they like it's there's it, being praised right now. But it is it, it's also it's called Dahmer and it's called a monster. Like it's yeah. really it's tied to the title. He is mm-hmm. like 
They portray him for what he was. Right. They pull nothing out. They show you how uncomfortable he is, how fucked up he is. There's not really any glorification. Like Jeffrey Dahmer, he was like, he was a social outcast. Yeah. It was a mixture of like his upbringing, like a shitty home with a lot of the hobbies that like his parents probably should have pulled the plug when he was like playing with dead animals. Right. Rather than mm. encouraging it. His dad was like, oh, Jeff's in the science. No, no. Jeff is cutting up dead animals in the right. garage. And you're encouraging it. Yeah. Right. And then it led, like, he was a social reject, so no one talked to him. That led to other kind of problems. Right. Before you, I mean, he killed his first person when he was, like, 18, 19 years old. Wow. He killed his first person in 1970. Mm. And I didn't know that. And the amount of times this motherfucker was arrested. Right. And the amount of people that tried to tell the police. The hard part about this, and you'll see this when you watch the show, is Jeff didn't have a lot of money. Yeah. He wasn't very successful. He got kicked out of the Army. He got kicked – Job to job, he got arrested numerous mm-hmm. times. He lived in a shitty part of Milwaukee. Like yeah. he lived in like what the police referred to as crack houses. Right. And that was the clip I seen where yeah. his his neighbor played by uh, Nisi Nash. Yes. Yes. And she's calling the cops, and she's like, repeatedly. It sounds like he's killing somebody over there. Yeah. And their recommendation cops. is go over there and find out for us. No. no. That's what the fuck I'm calling you <laughs> for. <laughs> That's literally what she was saying. And, and her, they, they play, they play an actual, her, her, which is fucked up. They play an actual phone conversation on the yeah, show. Yeah, her, 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 woman. her scene is like, I mean, because does she ever get no spoilers? Sorry, does she ever get caught up as a victim? Because? No, she, she lives, she lives, but she, she dealt with a lot of shit. Like she dealt with a very horrible smell, mm-hmm. and like you said, Ed. She would call at like all. She'd be like, "It's two a.m. and I hear power tools." Yeah, and like Jeff was fucked up. Like Jeff had a vat in the corner of his room. Like we're sitting here, like over there, like just a a barrel, mm. and it was full of acid that he would just dump the parts of the people he was fucking killing Oof. into to dissolve, Jeez. and then he would seal it so he could break it down. And like he would literally like his thing was he would invite dudes over, mm-hmm. like. To, to drug them and then murder them. That was his thing. He loved drugging people. And it was fucking weird. He would love to lay with, like, an, a, a comatose corpse. Right. He was fucking mm. dark. Disturbing. Yeah. Right. And sometimes he would invite a dude over to murder him, and there would be a dead fucking dude on the floor already. Jeez. Like, bro, you just murdered this guy. And yeah. Wait a wanna... while to murder. Like, yeah. no. What was yeah, his body count? It was, it was, I don't know if it was as, it wasn't as big as Bundy or the Green River Killer or something like that, but it was high. Yeah. And I remember the first episode, they don't pull no punches. They mm. show you the person he is. Because the first episode, they show you the guy that ended up reporting to the police that got him arrested. And the first episode, the guy comes into the room and he sits on the bed, and there's a fucking blood stain on the mattress. Like, the guy's, like, all fucked up and drugged, and behind him, he's like, what the fuck? Like, there's a giant, blood stain. like, huge pumpkin-sized blood stain on mm. the mattress. Damn. And it's like, dude, come on, man. The like, question, though, is, like, it, it was one thing when they did, like, the documentaries for an hour or two. Yeah. And then the documentary started becoming like eight, nine, ten episodes long. It's, which is a bit a- much. And right. now it's it's a, it's a full on show. Yeah. Right. Like at what point? Like and like you're, you're once these... you get to show, it's like it's a little much. That's what I'm saying. I like I Especially feel like especially if... for someone who like theoretically like well, that's not that long ago. I mean that's yeah. that's f- very recent. Well, here's what's weird. These people like. They end up having these weird followings, and it's like it's kind of a phenomenon. And they yeah. like even in She-Hulk. Yeah. Look at the women that were lined up to marry Emil Blonsky. Yeah. Like, he's the fucking abomination. Yeah, he and that happens people. Like, when real life serial killers on death row. Charles Manson got married in prison to a very attractive younger girl. Wow. Yeah. He was a monster. He convinced people to they murdered Sharon Tate. They cut the baby out of her stomach, and this woman, this young girl, <coughs> fell in love with Charlie over letters and married him. Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker. Yep. Yeah. There are women crying outside the prison. Jeez. Free Richard. I want to marry Richard. What? This motherfucker. You think it's like some kind that. of a disturbing thing that some I don't know, man. People have where they're attracted to there, there is that a, kind of there a is murderous a weird, person. There is a weird fascination. With I mean, there's yeah. clearly somebody for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that yeah, that is a little else. disturbing on the person that's like, that's the person I'm picking for myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's. Oh just, yeah, let's start a family with this guy. Yeah. yeah, but I think I think you're right. I think we were touching base on the fact that like at some point, then it's like some of these crazy people. It's like 
may look to do more crazy and be more outlandish yeah. to have this I might I might not just have my name in an article where, I might 10 years down the line have a TV show right, about me right yeah. and I and hope that, at least some of the that's proceeds you're go to the family. you don't want people to be inspired by no this type I don't of shit. I don't well there is definitely something and to f- that and the thing is for as many people are gonna find the show dark and disturbing there is gonna be a small chunk of people that are like yeah yeah, that's this. my guy. Yeah. Yeah. Look at yeah. how famous he became. Yeah, it, exactly. The Virginia Tech shooter. He literally even said the reason I wanted to shoot this many people was to get the record. Yeah. And that was his motivation. Ted Bundy wow. did not start cooperating. And with Virginia police. Tech was a handgun. Yeah. Not an assault rifle. Nothing nope. automatic. So handgun. Up close. Yeah. And he, well, he went through there with just the intention of killing as many people as possible. Like that's wow. why he did it. Um, uh, I'm not familiar with him. Where? Where? What? What did he do? Specifically, it was like, what was that, like 40 some odd people? Yeah, it was the highest, it's the most on, deadly on the Virginia shooting. Tech college yeah. campus. Okay. It was, yeah, okay. I mean, it, it doesn't get as much, it doesn't get as much like it's the horror factor wasn't there as much because it wasn't like a bunch of children, yeah, mm-hmm. like in an elementary school, it's like Sandy Hook and stuff. But like but the guy, the guy went there with the intent, yes, yeah, he said that to police, he said, I wanted to get the record, damn. And it's like Ted Bundy, he didn't start like when they, Ted Bundy was in prison, they were asking him to help with the. Green River Killer, mm-hmm. they're like, you did similar killings, you know. Yeah. You d- can you help us? He didn't want to help at all until the Green River Killer started getting close to his numbers. And then all of a sudden, oh. you can't. And then all of a sudden, Ted Bundy was like, "Well, no, oh, I don't, well, I don't wait a minute. I don't want him to beat me." Yep. And then he started cooperating with police completely. Mm-hmm. It's like, that, come on, man! But like, isn't that fucking crazy? But that's what I'm saying. Is. Like, th- within their own group, they are competitive, right? Yeah. That, that's a short fire sign. But now, uh, when you, when Sandman. you. When yeah, you, yeah. The when you glorify the whole, the whole thing with yeah. Simon, yeah, it's exactly when, that. When you glorify it with a show, like I said, I hope that at least some of the proceedings go to the families that were affected, or something have to, look at that, to yeah. justify making this other than money. Yeah, yeah. because at it's a, a, it's, yeah, it's a good show. It's just it's dark, and yeah. there, and there's nothing positive. Like you watch a normal show, and like. I don't know. At least for most people, I feel like you watch the show and then like you take something away from it. You laugh or you're like, yeah. wow, that was crazy. Like you watch yeah. Game of Thrones. Yeah. I, I feel like a part of me is dead after every episode. <laughs> I'm like, what? And supposedly my friend, I was talking to my friend Lauren. She's finished it. And she's like, what episode do you want? I'm like, on episode six. She goes, is that silence? And I said, yeah, that's the name of the title. I haven't started it yet. She goes, I was bawling at the end of that. I'm like. Well, what the hell? I don't want to. What, what? <laughs> Let me put this off for like a couple months. I mean, I'm. I don't want to see this shit. Yeah, like, yeah, come on. yeah, yeah. I, I, and that, and that's the line. And I think, <laughs> I like, fucking watch that. that some, <laughs> some of the actors, like, you gotta think, get affected. Oh yeah, negatively or something has to. He's like, gonna have to go to therapy. Pierce in their brain. The actor, in their yeah. life, the right? actor that did this is going to. I like if Tom Hanks had to go to fucking therapy for Forrest Gump. This dude is going to need like a full intervention. Yeah. yeah, like he's he nails Dominic. Well, again, if this is watch, if you watch real life, this is his fourth oh serial killer role. Yeah, like this is the he's like he's getting casted constantly for it now. He's gonna at this get Ezra Miller. He's going to get all <laughs> fucked th- up. <laughs> I, I used to be suspect of Rob Zombie until the Munsters. I'm just like, nah. <laughs> oh, that's You're fucking it, whack. It, it is out. It I, is out. I it's added out. it. I added it to my list. You're gonna watch it. it. Are you gonna watch it? Yo, I'm going. Why would you do I'm going that to try yourself? to. I'm going to try to because I saw it pop up and I'm like, I have to. Oh, I the, have to. The now. Rotten Tomatoes is If you shit watch it, it, I'll watch Hocus Pocus too. <laughs> <laughs> and then you gotta watch Firefly. <laughs> On air. I feel like I'm losing this. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's an ongoing thing, though. It's an ongoing thing. I haven't watched I've been, wa- I've been waiting. I'm not, not going to do it. I'm I've not going to do waiting. this because I care about Ed, and I do not want to put Ed through the worst. <laughs> that looks bad. I'm a Rob Zombie fan. That looks bad. That terrible. looks horrible. Yeah, was, Dude, it's, it's Netflix, they, right? They just stealth dropped it. They didn't announce yep, that it's, it's on out. Netflix and they the, just put it up and went, it's out. Even That's the it. trailer they put, like like when you just leave the thing on the yeah. video and it plays, I was like, this looks like shit. Yeah. It's not even a trailer. It's like actual footage. It, it has to be awful. A, a contractual Horrible. agreement that they're like, all right, we're just going to put it out. Yeah. And that's it. But but Rob, we're not going to spend Rob any probably, money advertising it. Rob probably heard all the feedback on the trailer and he was like, okay. <sighs> yeah. How, but how could he not see it visually as an artist, Rob, as somebody who creates? Rob does a lot of drugs. And... <laughs> Fair enough. He Ozzy Osbourne did. It's just fucked up. Oh, it doesn't look good. Ozzy wouldn't put his name on something that bad. <laughs> some, <laughs> Ozzy did some artists. Ozzy knows what's good. That's true. <laughs> some artists, you have to let go of the reins, let them go. Others need some reins. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, I say <laughs> even let great, him go, even great but just artists, don't call him back. Even great <laughs> artists shit the bed. That's true. Some great true. artists shit the bed. Because I remember, um, I remember Metallica. Like they were gone for a long time, and then they were like, "All right, we're coming back. We're gonna do this fucking album." And they like they even did a documentary while they were doing the album, and the album was Saint Anger. Mm. It's so goddamn bad. Mm. Saint Anger to me, and if you're a Metallica fan, haven't heard it, listen to it. One of the worst the fucking metal songs of all time. Oh, I uh, believe it's horrible. It is horrible. Is that the one that uh, a fan recut the album, and the recut album was more popular than their actual released probably, album? Probably. It was horrible. <laughs> it was. I remember being a, a kid. I remember they I were not school. happy about yeah, it. I was in school. I remember listening to Saint Anger and going, "Metallica's dead." Like, I, like, <laughs> I can't believe I'm about to say this. That. Is I'm, the end I'm of not, heavy I metal? Can't, I can't be a Metallica fan if they keep releasing music like this. Uh. I was like, well, "How could they? Like, how could you listen to that and say, oh, this is good? That's this fucking is, this great.' Is a, this is material I want to put out to my fans." I was like, it's, "It sounded like fucking. I don't know. It sounded like James Hetfield was like." I don't even know. That's <laughs> how they record the whole goddamn album in the bathroom. It was so bad. It was so uh, bad. Let's talk about Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Last episode. Good. Um, I will say good, this. Good, and I didn't expect to feel the way I felt. I like the new actresses. I think they're doing a good job, so I'm not even mad when it comes to Ooh. that. The last episode was fucking good. It was good, and I like the chick's dragon. They always t- they talked about how her dragon was the largest dragon for yeah. it in however long. It was like a big, monstrous sea dragon. I was yeah. like, that thing... It made me uncomfortable when it was on the screen. I was like, that thing looks like, no, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't ride that. I wouldn't play with it. I was like, fuck that. Give me a new dragon. Do, I don't want do you think thing. that changed him, though? Uh, what happened to his wife? Because regardless of how his. Spoiler outward, alerts. Oh, yeah, spoiler alerts. Regardless of how his outward appearance is, I feel like he still gets affected by shit. No, I think he's going to remember what she said to him, though. I think that she, she definitely noticed that Damon is destined for great things. Right. She's like, you're, you're right. Right, exactly. And we know he's destined for great things. The motherfucker took the beach by himself. I mean, the guy, yeah. that, that's king material. That's yeah. someone who's not going to be happy being number two or just like, okay, you're in charge of this. Yeah. No, yeah, that, how do that, you, that dude wants the throne. Yeah, how do you not get those people that followed him on the beach to keep following him after what he did? That, very good point. I'm yeah. telling you one thing. If I am serving someone and I watch my commander do that, I will follow, follow that man into the fires of hell. But, I am sorry. My life is forfeit. Like, I, I, no. But he's very self-serving, which is why he doesn't tether himself to such things. Like, he just keeps ooh, moving. Ooh. Um, he keeps doing <laughs> his, his nasty wherever he wants. but With whoever he wants. Yeah, I mean, and I think, I think that that definitely probably will change him. Um <laughs> You fixed? You're all good? Uh, maybe. That'll, that'll at least help a little bit. Yeah. It, it, it takes. It's going to take a lot to fix me in life. Mostly. Um, I think that the queen <laughs> fucked up in a big way. Which one? Um, oh, Allison? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think she Allison did. Allison Hightower. I think now she Allison fucked Target. up, and now she's in bed with the devil. Uh, mm. Yeah, because uh, the crippled dude from the strong family. Yeah. Fuck yeah. He, and he's the new little finger. Yep. He's the new mm. little finger. But he's he like, d- what? Oh, my brother and my father are going back to Harren Hall? Yeah. Let me cut off the tongues of a bunch of murderers and criminals and send them as a hit squad. I, like I respect, bee, those I respect the hustle. I those respect little... the hustle. Bro. He's like, I'm a gimp, but I'm going to make my way to the top. <laughs> Guess who's in charge of, of Heron Hall now? The guy with yep. the cane. She's got a problem because he's like, he's eating in her room and playing with flowers and shit. And yeah, he's like, and now, he's got, and now he's got her by the, the hoo-ha lips. Uh-huh. Because he's, she's like, well, that's not what I wanted. Yep. Uh, too bad you knew about it, and yep. now people are dead. And <laughs> I wanted wrap a around. friend, and we're yep. friends now. Yep. And now, I just happened to kill yeah. people. I just weaseled my way into the set. <laughs> yeah. well, what do you think about the bee pendant? A little too much? Like advertising? Yeah, uh... yeah and he didn't fuck around, though. He, he burned his brother and father. Oh, yeah. Like, he didn't fuck around. He's mm. like, no, I... I'm gonna burn my father and my brother. He's like, <laughs> You're gonna learn today, yeah, boys. Dude, 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 fuck it, dude. Didn't play around. Oh, listen, I gotta get out of here early. How long? Uh, like now. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys can keep it going if you like. And uh, it's up to you. We want to go. Yeah, we'll All see right. what we got. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, signing off early. My apologies, but I crushed my fucking phone. So <laughs> I gotta go get this bitch fixed. I will leave you in these very capable hands. <laughs> We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Don't fuck it up, guys. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> you can't fuck it up any worse. Don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> so you're caught up, right? You're caught up no, I, I got to catch the last episode. I'm, I I only have so much time in the day. Yeah. And uh, didn't catch this last one didn't yet. Catch the last one. Yeah. Are you caught up? On, are you caught on Rings of Power though, right? Mostly. Mostly. So you yeah, I, seen... I got, I got, I got like half an episode left to uh, 
to watch, and then I had to start setting up everything. Uh, okay, yeah, that's why it's. That, I'm telling you, man, it's it's a fucking that last one. It's just it's uh, it kind of sets up what's gonna happen going forward. And I, when it happened, as it was happening, I was like, they just did, did Mordor just. Did we just birth birth Mordor? Is that what just took place? Is that what just took place? I do like the pace of the show. They're not. They're they're. It's moving appropriately. It's not too fast, but they're not dragging things out too much. But it's like every episode there is something fairly significant. If you know the future and the the movies that came afterwards. Yeah, and they're not really giving everybody too much. No, they're they're giving you just enough where people are speculating. Yes, like it's like Zach Gandalf. Like, and then you're like, yeah. well, okay, well, I know that Elendil. It's like, Sauron. Yeah. No. Sauron? Sauron! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sauron? I, know. I was like, wait a minute. Like, like, hold on a minute. Like, wait, you're not Sauron? Okay, whatever. I was like, you're just an evil elf that's leading the orcs. Yeah. Okay, fine, fair. Like, was just, Sauron? <laughs> No, exactly right. That's exactly right. I'm like, wait a minute. Which one of you is the big bad? It, it, it is. It is. It is a uh, very well done in the way they're giving you more. We like, ooh, is that? And then it's like, no, 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 and this. Uh, no, 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 and this. And it's just opening. I, 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 I can't imagine how much. I feel like they're gonna make Sauron like someone who's been around us, like someone who's with us already. And yeah. Because Sauron and, can do what he wants. And has been there the whole time, almost like. Like maybe Sauron is, what's his name, Halbrand or whatever. Yeah. 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 Maybe. I mean, it's, it's going to be something fucked up. Like yeah, because you have you have the dude that's already with the orcs. You have Halbrand. You have the, the man that fell from the, there's so many people where it's like, well, who is actually Sauron. who yes. once we start moving along further in the story? I feel like the guy that fell from the sky, I feel like that's Gandalf. I mean, light, fire, talking to animals, yeah. wearing rags, living with hobbits. Gandalf. I mean, yeah. I feel like that's a give me. But then again, it might not be a give me because who's the weirdos? Like the bald elf. The three the, the yeah. three that showed up to where he landed. No idea who they are. Yeah. They're creepy and their eyes are spaced really far apart. Like the girl in Hocus Pocus <laughs> too. But I don't know who they are actually. I don't know. Um, I don't know. And then like some of the characters that they're introducing, we know that they exist already. Yes. Like Elendil. Is Sildor's father. Yeah. We know that somehow he has to become king. Mm-hmm. Because they say in Lord of the Rings, the first one, Fellowship of the Ring, the Sildor, son of the king, took up his father's sword, cut the ring off yeah. off, his, off Sauron's hand. Now, the, the one thing that's also relevant to point out about the people from Numerar is they live like 300 years where yes. all the other humans barely make it to 100. They live like us. They live like yeah. normal lives. So, like, we're seeing them now. But it's like, well, we still have upwards of almost 300 years before he gets to cut the ring. You're like, it's like there's a. Yeah, because the seal door's young. Yeah. He's he's a teenager, maybe. Yeah. So it's like, well, we have, you know, 200 plus years we can easily go before maybe he has said showdown. So, like, it's it's a chunk of time before what's his name even needs to become king. Uh, in terms of the storyline and timeline that we have established that we know of. I got to rewatch uh, all the Lord of the Rings because I was watching them with Sierra. And yeah. She, like, the, so the, of course, I did the extended edition. Oh, that's literally what I was going to ask. The original theatrical? Yes. And I watched the extended Or the long. <laughs> and the Return of the King. <laughs> extended edition. That is a, oh my God. <laughs> that is like a fucking four hour plus movie. Yeah. That's insane. And I'm watching this shit and I'm like, I can't, like, and there's even things I, th- I thought I missed. Like there's a, they cut out the one scene where they Aragorn's talking to um, Eowyn yeah. from Rohan. And she's talking to her and they, she says, like, well, how old are you? you know, and he's, like, in his 80s. Yeah. That's what she doesn't realize. He's like, no, I'm, I'm in my 80s. I'm just – I have Numenorean blood in me. Yeah. So that's why I live this long. So that's you know, a little bit of an age difference. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. I, 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 you know, I didn't know that Aragorn was 80 years old at the time of the Battle of, of Minas Tirith. Yeah. Oh, looks good so for his it, age. So those little, I mean, there's a lot of little details like that 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 do change, and I find it interesting that they're keeping a fairly tight timeline. They're not doing what what House of the Dragon is doing, which is constantly jumping and moving. And when they do that, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, I'm like guys, like it it may end up being the best thing for the show, or it might be at the end of the season where you just like, well, well, fuck. it doesn't drag. You're right. Yeah, I mean, it does. It jumps from event to event to event, but it's like there's these bits in between where there's story that could have been told, and I find it odd that for a show that I know they're going to want to do for as many years as possible, 
they're, that they're just they that jumping they that money. so many years over and over and over versus taking their time and telling I'm the, having a hard those time bits. Keeping up with characters. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like they'll jump ahead like years per episode. And like all of a sudden, it's like all of a sudden there's all these kids that are showing up. Yeah, you got different. You got a whole new crop of characters, new faces that were the other characters and yeah. things. I mean, it's like gonna one kid start is jerking off in a window. I'm like, what the fuck? What's happening? <laughs> what is that? Where are we? It it's it's an interesting way to tell the story, but it it I can definitely see people not keeping up with it. Yeah, it's they're not gonna catch lightning in a bottle twice. Yeah. Game of Thrones, I mean, George R. R. Martin wrote those books back in the 80s. Yep. And he finally cashed in. Game of Thrones is one of the most successful, if not the most successful TV show of all time. And that is something interesting to point out. Yeah, he started those books in the 80s. 40 years. Yes. It took 40 years to write those books, and he's still, like, it's taken him this long to finish. He's not going to finish. And, and he's still, Those exactly. He's still out there. So it's like, there's a point of like, it took that long for him to tell that story. And they burned through it so quickly. I think he spent all that time writing all those books, and he spent all that time not getting the credit I guess he felt he was due. Yeah. Now he's finally a multi-zillionaire now, making video <laughs> games, making <laughs> Elden Ring. He's also a close advisor on this season of yep. Watching House. I don't think he's ever going to write the books. We have titles. We know it's supposed to be Winds of Winter and then A Dream of Spring. Mm. But I don't think we're ever going to get them. I don't think me and you will He's, ever read those books. Yeah, at the speed he, he puts out books, at how old he is, and the numerous projects he's being asked to work on now, it, it, it is a little hard-pressed of, like, are these books going to be done? I don't think they will. I think it's especially as successful as Elden Ring was. Yeah. Elden Ring, I mean, got... You know, it's the no, best, best Souls-type game ever. That's like, only going to draw more attention for him to tell more stories in other mediums. Can he work on a JRPG? Is that so much to ask? <laughs> I mean, I, I just, I'm just saying. Like, I, you know, I want George to try to, you know. I don't know of any JRPGs that even come close to how dark uh, things like Elden Ring were. Yeah, because El well, Elden, the Dark Souls, whole like the whole feel of it, it gives you like an, a unique like world and background yeah like when you're playing it you feel isolated you feel alone you feel like and, that, and also the difficulty just scares the shit out of you yeah like you literally can be killed by anything at yep. any time like the smallest enemy doesn't matter how leveled you are will fuck your <laughs> shit up if you don't pay attention there's many a fail video yeah and that's why i hated sekiro that's yeah. why i hated sekiro yeah no. every soldier i banged into <laughs> was possibly a death sentence if that's you're not prepared for that to sit down and play that style of game, then it becomes the worst thing to be playing. Yes, every fight was a fight for your life. There's, it's, it's like that one mode in Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. You can put on a mode where it's one-hit kills. <laughs> Arrows, anything is one-hit kills. Mm -hmm. So literally, you're fighting, and if you fuck up one time, if you mess up a parry, if yep. you get your dodge wrong, you die. And then you can play the whole game in black and white, like in a Kira Kora yeah. style film. I, was I mean, sorry, it's, a, it's cool. an interesting mode to have added into the game. I'm not too big of a fan of that's the baseline game mode. And I forget which game had they had did something with the the scripting where um, it was a deliberately hard game, but if you put it on easy instead of making it easy, it actually made it harder than the normal mode. Um, and it, it came out in America that way, but then in like Japan, it was the right way. So the people in America were having issues with like playing the game because uh, no it wasn't it was an older game and i remember seeing the story about it and it's it's kind of a hilarious like oh it's probably just a missed translation of something and people are like oh we know it's a difficult game so i'll play it on easy and they're like this on easy is impossible i love the translation who is playing up. this <laughs> on normal yeah. i love the translation fuck ups i love them like the, one of the best for me is the street fighter one that's yeah, the best, uh, to my opinion, that's the best translation fuck up ever. I mean, characters are permanently named different names yes. Bison, because of Bison it. Bison was supposed to be Vega. Yep. Vega was supposed to be Balrog, and then uh, Balrog was supposed to be M. Bison because it was Mike <laughs> Bison. It was a play on Mike Tyson. And they literally Capcom just Capcom USA was like, ah, oh, no one will care. It's Close gonna, enough. Yeah, it's not going to take off one of the most successful fighting franchises ever. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. You permanently have three characters where you got to name swap them because you fucked up. Yeah. International competition is fucked up. Oh yeah, because I didn't even, I'm, I didn't even think about that playing in competition. The players from Japan are all screwed up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. When they try to come here, because I know PR Barrog was talking about how weird that was, like when he was playing in Japan. Yeah. It was not 
Balrog. <laughs> and bison. So, yeah, no, those are good. But yeah, yeah, that's gonna throw off your competition. Your name is Balrog, and you're playing bison the whole time. They're like, wait a minute, what is this man doing? I don't. Is he not playing us with his best character? Is he second character in Gus? What's, what's happening? What's happening here? <laughs> I like watching Justin Wong. I like watching him when he um, his videos he puts out on YouTube when he's like fighting people online. Because mm-hmm. he still plays a lot of the old games. He'll play like Street Fighter Third Strike. Yeah. He'll put in Street Fighter Two Turbo, and he'll still play guys online. And there's guys out there in the on like the online servers that actually give him a run for his money. Yeah. And it's weird seeing, like, one of the best, legitimately one of the best fighting game competitors on Earth Yeah, struggle sometimes with just Joe Blow. It's interesting because some of that, I think it comes down to uh, the back end on the streaming. There's a particular way they want it set up, and not every fighting game comes out with um, the background for the way it streams online done the right way. And it's like, no, for any of the games that ever make it into the proper competitions, man, I'm drawing a blank on, on what it's called. It's a particular way uh, it should be set up so that it minimizes the amounts of lag and it and it accurately or more accurately depicts who actually should be winning. Because with those games like that, you're counting like frames. Yeah. Of where your hits are landing and things like that. So, if you're not using the right uh, net code for the way it streams, then you know somebody's host and they're getting an advantage that they shouldn't have. We get a couple frames that maybe you know exactly. Not so they end up countering or blocking things that they're not supposed to, and it's still odd to see any fighting games come out and not use the proper net code. Where it's like, you, but you know this is a thing. Or you just pick a piece of shit At- fighting game like uh, uh, DC. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Just play Superman. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> Superman. <laughs> but it's, it's one of those things where it's like the companies know better. They know better. They know they got to build it off this because otherwise the chance of it ever becoming big enough to get into competitions is completely zero. Because they're not going to want to play the game if there's people getting an unfair advantage when they're practicing against live players online. Well, they build characters into some of these games that are unfair. Like, who was that piece of shit that, uh, that Nelson kept picking in that game? Um, <laughs> like, me and you would go on a winning streak, but then he would pick some guy that, like, he would do this combination and just kill us. Oh, uh, which game? Oh, my God, what the hell were uh, we playing? I know in... Uh, was it Mortal Kombat? In Mortal Kombat, who would he use? I know... I know uh, Superman was one of his uh, it guys. It was Soul Calibur, I think, because we were playing. Yeah, it was Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur would be Click, the guy with the, the staff. Yeah, well, he picked this one character, and it was like a giant fire dude, <laughs> and it just killed us. <laughs> oh, like, that's in. Uh, it was bullshit. It was yeah. Bullshit. Well, each game always has something. Then that's we looked a little... it up, and it said this, he's an unlockable character with. The boosted DPS yeah, 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 yeah. He's not even allowed in, in competition yeah, play. And I was like, oh, well, then no shit. Yeah, because he, like, two hit kills you. That's such a Nelson <laughs> thing to do. You know? Nelson, you have anything to say to defend yourself? Of course not. Of course not. Because yeah. it's unjustifiable, That's sir. That's right, yes. <laughs> Fixing your iPhone, you fucker. <laughs> But no, it, it's, that's why he plays games like that, you know? Yeah. He plays games where you just pick Superman and win or pick the fire guy and win. That's yep. dumb. He, he, gets a, he gets joy out of beating people when there's an unfair advantage <laughs> in, his, in, his, uh, in his favor. That's just how he is. But that's been in fighting games. I mean, Marvel versus Capcom, too. They yep. talk about the Omega-level characters. Mm-hmm. Storm, Magneto, Sentinel. There's characters you pick where you just have such an advantage. Yep, whether and it's the moveset or... Or the w- Star Fox in... Uh, Super Smash Brothers. Yeah. Star Fox was banned in international competition, and so was um, Meta Knight. Mm. Like, they just had, like, because Meta Knight, if you could knock him off the cliff, you could fly. <laughs> like, he would not fall to his death. He'd fly around, and his damage was, like, higher than everybody else's. He had, like, a stupid sword combination of unblockable. And it's amazing how some of that gets through the testing, because it's like, well, this clearly is breaking the way that the game is supposed to function yeah, for you to actually the way win. Can actually play it. So then it, it, it no longer allows the other characters to win as consistently. But those little things become, and you see it all online where they start nerfing things and trying to fix it and all that. And then it's a nightmare to kind of play catch up with what everybody online is kind of figuring out before the company figures it out. I remember when I used to play. Um Back when I actually did try to play Call of Duty, yeah, um, I played World at War. And it was World War Two, and I remember like there was this thing that started. 
and that everybody would call them noob tubers. Yeah, yeah. And it was literally <laughs> because they would just use like explosive rounds. The grenade, the grenade grenades launchers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. they would use grenades and they would just fire and it because it was too easy. You yep. A guy, hey, look, thook, boom, and he's dead. And I, I used to embrace that strategy. Yeah. Because people were like, oh, you're a noob tuber. I'm like, it's in the game. Yeah, so man. I'm, I'm not a noob, I'm, but however, I'm, this is a tactic that is I'm, in the game. I'm yeah. getting my numbers up. I'm getting my numbers <laughs> up. And I'm ending your kill streak. You may be pissed at me. Uh huh. And I used to, like, they would watch me. Like, you could take a look at people's kits. Like, yeah. when, when they're loading into the game, you can see what people are using. Yeah. And, like, I used to get people used to say, talk such shit because they'd see I have, like, <laughs> grenade stick. Two extra grenades. Yeah. Like I, I, and they were like, oh, you piece of shit. Like, like, they knew what I was going to do. They knew. I was like. I, and that's one of those build yourself a loadout yeah. to counter yeah. it if you don't want to be playing it. I was like, stay away from the walls. Stay yeah. Near the fucking walls. <laughs> and there are people that like, you know, they, a camper. camper eh, mm -hmm. Counter it. Yep. The guy's just being a sniper. Stay the that's fuck That's like, I remember. Avoid in, his position so he can't shoot yeah. you. And gears when you were able to plant the grenades. And you just find the right spot where you know everybody's going to run through here, but nobody looks at this little corner until it's too late. That was the and, Claymores. And yeah, and World nothing better than, like, this corner here, this is going to get me a kill no matter what. And you can hear it and you <laughs> see the plus one. Just, uh -huh. ah, got see him. a little grenade pop up got on the bottom him. with their name, like, gotcha, bitch. I got you. <laughs> yes. But no, if it's in the game, you have to adapt to the strategy. And then, yeah. You know. I remember, like, uh, when Mortal Kombat was real big, people would pick Blaze because of how big and strong he was yeah. and he did all that damage. But he was one of the easiest guys to beat if you would just jump kick, drop down punch. Jump yeah. kick, <laughs> drop down punch. And, it, like, I would just say to him, hey, if you don't want to get your ass beat like that, yep. pick a, a decent character. And that's part of any of the online games is, is having that the, the proper strategy. But you see it now where it's, it's a constant uh, – What's the new loadout? What's the meta? What scope and what this and what that? And everybody is running around with like one of two setups and nobody's really attempting to do anything outside of what all the pros are doing because they don't want to be a percentage point off of, you know, whatever they might have. Yeah, there's there's like they look at who's the best at the game and that, OK, this is the archetype. This is how we play it. Mm -hmm. We cannot deviate from the yep. norm at all. I cannot know. And then it even goes all the way down into the game settings. What's the look sensitivity? How are they remapping the buttons? Do they got the paddles on the back? Well, I need to get the paddles on the back now, too. I can't I can't be taking my thumb off the stick. I got to make sure my thumbs are on the stick so all my buttons are back here now. Cause, all, those, you know. all those fighting guys have their own <laughs> fucking like, weird setup they bring in. Like, every single yeah, fighting guy like shows little, up with little his little own arcade stick. Yep. Joystick. And if you ever watch their fingers, it's horrifying. I, uh -huh. I, I could never, like, they're playing five, six moves ahead. Yeah, and then, then so, like, at a certain point, you got to start – uh, questioning, well, it's no longer becoming standardized. Yeah. Everybody's got a different arcade stick and they're using, I got these buttons and they got these buttons and I'm using these sensors and this and that. And, and like, uh, I, I can't imagine how much of an advantage they're really getting. But if you're playing something as a competition, any kind of advantage does kind of throw off the fact of, Who's winning or not? You know, yeah. once you put in all the numbers of, you know, hundreds of hundreds of matches, it's like, well, if they would have lost, you know, one percent more, well, they shouldn't have even been in the competition. Yeah. But they had a bigger budget for I'm, a fancier arcade stick. I'm glad Evo is still a thing. I'm glad it still gets the attention <laughs> it does because I, I do tune in. I do watch every year to see, okay, who's the best at this this year? What games made the list? And you know, it is it is still interesting to me. I'm not as good as I once was. I used to play a shit ton of Street Fighter, but yeah. I still tune in to see, okay, who's the number one guy this year? Who's, 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 you know? And I saw that they're announcing Street Fighter, um, Street Fighter 6 mm. is coming out, and they're trying to pull in new people because Street Fighter 6 has like an open world story mode. Interesting. Where you create your own guy and you go around, and I think you find guys to study under. Well, like, that, if you uh, want to play like Ryu, huh. yeah. So you'll join Ryu's, like, I don't know. I don't know how, hmm. I don't know how I feel about it either. Can they, can they, allow that because most of the time when they do that it's not carried into the competition Probably so it's not. like you're putting in this giant amount of time into a game mode that when it comes to competition it's removed and really the fact that the game has competition is one of the biggest reasons people are playing it so how much efforts are going into that versus streamlining your net code making sure that the inputs are crisp making sure that everything is balanced properly and no particular character has too much of an advantage over other characters. I mean, that's right. a lot of effort 
into a game mode that chances are it's not going to be allowed by the elite players who are the people that are going to the be governing body bringing in other players to play the game. You got a point. You got a point. I mean, I, I mean, for me they're, personally, they're, they're trying to do something. They're yeah. trying, I guess they're trying to bring people to the Street Fighter. You know, for for me personally, it's fine because I don't I don't play them online. I am not good enough to play them online, Neither and I, I don't right. have the time to get good enough to play them online. No, if you want to be competitive at that, you got, <laughs> that has to be like a part-time job. Like, like when you when you start seeing the real people playing online, then they start t- talking about, oh, this is this many frames, and this is this many frames, and I'm like, I, no, no, no. You, you realize that okay, there's I levels. don't have the time to break down each punch and its <laughs> actual range versus the defense. For each particular person, they may go against online. I don't. That's yeah. too much. Street Fighter is, is very user friendly compared to other like they're Tekken. Like Tekken yeah. has like <laughs> fucking sixteen button combinations. I'm like, yes. oh, okay, hold hold the phone. Like, and if you watch it, it'll literally take someone's entire life bar out. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Like, I'm like, but come on, like, like how many weeks did you have to stand in front of the TV to learn that? Just like, practicing that one move that over, one and, move over, and, over, over and over and over and over and over again. And they just drill it into their. I remember. I remember when I did play with Tekken Four, and I actually like played a lot of it. I was watching like some of the combinations people did with Jin Kazama, and like the button combination would be like this fucking long. I'm like, <laughs> oh, wait, hold! And, like it was all diagonal up down. I'm like, no, yeah. no. I, I remember I, when. Uh, I, just, I remember no when the, the the ability for combos came out, and that the first time it was in Mortal Kombat, is at least uh, when it first came across to me, and people showing up. Uh, to the arcade with like a pamphlet for like their character. Like here's the different, you know, combination. He's a three hit. He's a five. And it's just like trying to train yourself to do all these different combinations now. Cause it's no longer just like five or six special moves and knowing yeah. a general idea what you should do when somebody's doing something else. Now you got like I a hit, whole book for miss, each character. I miss the disrespect of someone trying to look up the fatality combination. <laughs> like they beat you and like your fucking character is staying there just like, wobbling yes. in place and they'll pause it like hold on a minute. Yeah. <laughs> let me look up how to fucking murder you worse and it's like thanks i'll just sit here and wait for you to figure out the button and then like then they try to put it in they just punch you once in the throat yep. and it's like oh, I, how you put it in wrong i remember when uh that first happened we were playing mortal kombat at our, our friend up the block at casey's house and uh somebody did a fatality by mistake and this was before we had uh, the blood code. Right. Because I had ordered the book from Scholastic, and yeah. it was not in the mail yet. Yeah. So I was waiting for it to come in, and somebody did the thing. I'm like, wait a minute. These are in here? Yeah. How did we do that? And, yeah. and it was like nobody managed to do it again until the book came in. I'm like, all right, here's the blood, A, B, A, C, A, B, B. Like, are we got this shit now? Now we can actually see what that was supposed to be. like, yep. <laughs> Yeah, that the the magic of those fighting games, you know. I don't know if it'll be recaptured. I know Tekken's coming out with their new one. It's like Tekken Seven or yeah. something like that, and Street Fighter Six is coming out. So I know that there's that's gonna like you know. I'm sure there'll be an Evo 2023. Yeah. It's hard to do something new with them. Yeah. So it's almost like there's well, the new Tekken looks beautiful. If you haven't seen the yeah. trailer for it, it looks good. It, it starts the trailer they released is a fight scene between Jin Kazama and his father, Kazuya. I would just want it where I buy the game and I get the whole game. I hope so. I am, I am very – I haven't – ever since they started making they characters. Like all the characters yep. behind paywalls, like I, I remember you used to have to get the game. You'd find secret characters, and that would be great. But now it's like you get the game – and then, like, three months later, there's another guy. And then three months later, there's nothing. Like, uh, by the end of the year, I'm not really playing that fighting game anymore for you to finally release the last people that you announced when you first sold me the game. Yeah, Mortal Kombat went crazy with the characters. They're like, all right, we're going to put yeah. the Joker in, Rambo, Terminator, yeah. And it, I mean, like, I like it. It's interesting. <laughs> but honestly, after six months, don't be releasing more characters. That's yeah. too, That's that's so long down the line. Now it's time at to least, game. at least for me, where it's like I'm done. I've moved on to another game. I'm not still practicing the, that particular fighting. I played it. I got the story. I had yeah. maybe when people are over, I put it on, have a few beers, and we play. But I'm not on there every day playing that game over and over and over again. Yeah, I gave up on um, what the hell do you call it? Um, 
Assassin's Creed Valhalla. <laughs> it, it's just too big. It's too big. It, the game is too big. It took up so much space on my PlayStation. I just ended up deleting all the data. It, it is all, a massive game. It was massive. And they and released they, more and more They keep releasing more. stuff. So your yeah. achievements, you're never going to get them. Yeah. It's like, okay, now i got to get this expansion packet. No. No. Yeah. Uh, and the game, um, I hate to say this, once you got a certain amount of a system down, it, it was I would put the difficulty on the highest, and I was still beating all the yeah, opponents. Yeah, I was a still I was still killing. Yeah, like all they, the the Templars. You're supposed they're supposed to be tough. Like they honestly could have had everything that happens in the real like because you you go at, off to a whole nother world and you start dealing in the world of the Once gods. Like England? it yeah. should have. It's <laughs> like like I'm almost like you're playing two games here. Yeah. You think Norway's big, and then when you get to England, you're like, yeah. oh my god, like, this is so much game. They were they were releasing so many expansions packs for that that I was playing through the England campaign, and all of a sudden they were like, oh, do you want to go to a new land? I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. the fuck are we I was like, Norway. And next thing you know, I was in North America. Yeah. They had a Native American expansion. <laughs> and I was playing it. And I was like, what the fuck? And like, I, if they would have, if they make it more, and I know they're intending to make it more of a live service game, and they're supposed to be kind of be, be bringing everything they've done in the games into that. Yeah. I, I yeah. have a little bit of an interest in that, but there's, there's a level of like, I'm much more interested in the real world now modern story of what's happening that you only ever get bits and pieces of in every game. Yeah. Like I want one in the modern day now. Give me that game already. Like I want a big chunk of story in the modern and then go like you keep doing these little bits and pieces, but they never do enough where you get like an actual game of what that could be in the modern day. You get like one mission. You know? And it's like, oh I've I've been the animus so long that I see the things now. Yeah, th- there's, there's. And then assassins- you get shot. Yeah. You're like, well, what the fuck? Yeah, I the, thought I thought you were in the animus for yeah. so long that you get and you're dead. Yeah, the Assassin's Creed. Like, it's, <laughs> there's so much going on. Like, you'll be walking along, and all of a sudden the world's being distorted. Yeah. It's like okay, like it's it's connected to these relics and the society. And I'm like, I just want to be a Viking. Yeah. I. Just, I, I, I mean, I, and I know they tried to uh, reset it a bit there and kind of. And they and story wise they kind of did and and the gameplay wise they they sh- they sh- they switched it up a lot in the last few, and I like what they doing what they're doing with it. But I did like a little more of the very stealthy of more of the uh, original ones. Assassin's Creed. Oh uh, yeah, where you were really like an assassin, and like you were trying to kill people. Yeah, you, you couldn't fight your way out of it. Now it's like. I'm a fucking Viking. Yeah. I, I have a and legendary axe in one hand, a legendary hammer in the other. I'm wearing fucking bear armor. I have, I'm Thor's, like, I have half, half, half of Thor's armor on. Yeah, I'm like, what is sneak? <laughs> you know, I'm like, who gives a shit? Like, I, like, I don't it, need to be stealthy. I have a crew with me yeah. now. You and gave I gave me a, a sea boat full of I Vikings. thoroughly loved playing the Viking. Like, crashing into the church, yes. storming it. Like, it could have been... Who the fuck snuck anywhere? <laughs> it's, oh, it really could have been, like, its own game because they didn't have a lot of the actual stealth sneak mechanics. Yeah, that's for, that was... Raiding Raiding was one of the funnest parts. Yeah, it really... It was fantastic. It kept me playing it a very long time. But it really was, like, a whole separate game from what Assassin's Creed is supposed to be. In fact, they released expansions... Uh, for a raiding <laughs> raiding river, there was like a whole river yeah, thing. Yeah, because go you into. ran you ran out of raiding areas. Yeah, very quickly. Yeah, I was only challenged by certain things in that game, and that's like you do the legendary hunts and shit. Yeah, I know. I tried to do like one that was supposed to be end game, <laughs> end game hunt, and it was in Norway, and it was this giant bear. Yeah. on this ice flow. Oh yeah yeah and yeah, like yeah yeah. He's yeah. got spears and stuff stuck mm-hmm. in him. Like it look, you see people tried to kill him. Yeah. and failed. Yeah, he was a pain in the ass. Yeah, and he, I tried to kill him when I was like level forty, and he's like level <laughs> three hundred. I was like, yeah, this ain't gonna happen. So that's the only thing that challenged me. Everything else was kind of like, all right, once you had a system down, you could kill anything. Yeah. Yeah. You could kill anything. But they, I mean, it's nice to see them dropping as much content as they are, but the base game itself was a little longer than it needed to be. Yeah. As like, far as, yeah, as far as like any good JRPGs coming out and like my, like what I like, it's either going to be like remakes of old ones or it's going to be independent companies releasing good ones that yeah. are coming out. Like yeah. Sea of Stars, things like that. I heard they're remastering Sweet Code in 1 and 2. Mm. Konami is going to remaster it and then release it for like the Xbox, PS5, all that. It, um, it, it is interesting to see how many 
are being remastered. Because I know some of them are a little, uh, especially if some of the older Nintendo ones are a little wonky. Yeah, because o- they were Traveler Two is getting released. Some or... of them were remastered and they were different in different countries and not just story wise. Sometimes it was entirely different games in different countries. So yeah. it's like. I know when people look at emulation, they're like, well, which version of this Are game you about? Yeah. is it? Is this the Japanese release? Is this the American release? Which one are we looking at? This is the uh, the European yeah. release. Because you'll be like, oh, because that one's a different game than this one, well, which yeah, is kind of talk, different than. <laughs> you can't even talk to a Japanese guy back because you're like, oh, have you played Trials of Mana? He means, oh, you mean Senken Densetsu 3. It's yeah. like, yeah, that one. I'm like, holy fuck. Like, we just don't get it. We never get it here in the West. That's like, like I seen a, a thing on G4. They were talking about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles games, and there's like eight of them that are just titled Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. No number, no subtitle, no nothing. So it's like, well, which one is the this? Battle one? for Manhattan. Nintendo. No, it doesn't even say Battle for Manhattan. It's just that was my favorite. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So it's like, is it the Nintendo, the Super Nintendo? Is that the Sega? Is that the arcade one, or is that the handheld one that wasn't on any cons? It's 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 absolutely absurd. God, I love it. God, I love it. Well, that's the way translation things go. I don't know. I don't know. Should we end this? I, don't know. <laughs> I, I think. I think we've run out of a little bit of steam at this point. We have at this point. <laughs> it was nice, though. It was refreshing not having like, all that negativity. In the yeah, yeah. Nelson, Nelson not jumping in to interrupt everybody. Right. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. being so polite today. I know. Thank God you broke your phone. <laughs> you know? Thank God. You know? <laughs> Me and Ed were able to have a wonderful conversation on this yeah. Saturday about Play. things we enjoy. Yeah, let's listen to a little bit of Matt on the way out. That's right. Thanks for listening today. Ed, tell us where we can find us. Yeah, on your social media, Sofa Kingdom OFC. And where else? On YouTube, Sofa Kingdom Podcast. Thank you for listening, guys. You know, yeah. we'll try to bring you more episodes like this without negativity and a, a wicked laugh, you know. We, 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 <laughs> we appreciate you guys tuning in. This was nice. This is refreshing. A it? nice, yeah. calm interlude for the last half of the episode. Absolutely. And as you can see by witnessing this, this is the way it functions with just positivity. Yeah. Just positivity and intelligence. That's it. <laughs> Nothing negative. Anything to say, Nelson? All right. Thank you. <laughs>